Hello everyone, Jim Carries of Smiles for Cinephiles here again. Terry Gilliam's 1995 surrealist sci-fi mind trip, The Twelve Monkeys, is a brain-bending ride back and forth through the wormholes of reality. This video is an analysis of the use of media within the film for the purposes of plot development and as social commentary. And as always, spoilers lie within. I will start with a quote from the mind that directed this vision. We live in an age where we're just hammered. Hammered to think that this is what the world is. Television's saying, everything's saying, that's the world. And it's not the world. The world is a million possible things. The mainstream media has always been a double-edged sword. It can fight for your glory in the public sphere or it can cut your reputation down to less than nothing. Gilliam has always had this duel, parrying the blows of the unfavourable film critics and famously drawing blood against the film studios when the cut of Brazil was not as he had intended. Twelve Monkeys portrays this exact bipolar relationship. Throughout the two-hour runtime, television, radio and newspapers are omnipresent. Their influence is used to further the narrative and drives the characters' decisions and ultimate fates. The vast majority of the articles included have a dark edge to them and represent the insidious effect that media can have on society. The best example of this is in The Asylum. Brad Pitt is in Best Supporting Actor and Oscar nomination form as Jeffrey Gomes and sets it out nicely. Where's the television? It's all right there. All right there. Look, listen, Neil, Brad. Why does the Asylum have manic cartoons on the television? Do the Asylum staff want patients manic? Is the outside world a negative influence, driving people and hence society crazy? We're all monkeys. Is this a caged monkey suffering at the hands of its captors? Is this the media keeping society within its preset parameters? Is this the Asylum constraining aberrant individuals? The Four Marx Brothers Monkey Business, again a monkey reference and hilarious slapstick maniacal farce. This clip develops Jeffrey's dialogue and serves as inspiration to his later Army of the Twelve Monkeys business. If we take a closer look at the advert before Cole's escape bid, During the decade ahead, consider the changes sweeping the world. this is foreshadowing of the virus outbreak. A bear market is one in decline, bears are also seen frequently in the film, escaped from zoo and in a future icy Baltimore. In a prop tabloid newspaper headline, Bat's Child Found in Cave, this shows junk press being read by the ineffectual security guard. Garbage in means garbage out. We skip forward now to a radio advert. Are you dying to get away? The Florida Keys are waiting for you. I've never seen the ocean. The characters buy into the advertisement. And it is inspiration for their destination at the end of the film. You said you'd never seen the ocean. We have 9.30 reservations for Key West. And in Fresno, California, crews continue to attempt to rescue nine-year-old Ricky Newman. The story of Ricky Newman, the child who fell down a well shaft. The story is fake news incredibly prescient to current events, but also acts as proof to Dr. Rayleigh that Cole had travelled from the future and that he knew the outcome that the boy was hiding in a barn. Incidentally, the reporter in this article is named Roger Pratt. As it happens, Roger Pratt reporting. The three-time cinematographer for Gilliam. Cole wakes from a fevered dream into the zany world of Woody Woodpecker on the television. The character, Professor Gross and Fibber, a hybrid of German and English, means great lie and he has invented a time tunnel. Various extreme events are reported on the TV and radio news. Police say that the body of a woman found strangled in the Newtson State Park could be kidnapping victim Dr. Catherine Raley. Of 
convict from Orange War. His body was discovered in an abandoned theater. Are these appropriate for daytime news? That's when he let a hundred snakes loose in the Senate. A newspaper clipping detailing the Army of the Twelve Monkeys activism acts as political comment. The US Senate is full of snakes. The serpent, the reptilian manifestation of evil, is in the halls of power and influence. The use of the term snake colloquially means traitor, that the elite will betray the people. This is also foreshadowing the Army of the Twelve Monkeys release of animals. I just love this shot and had to include it. Fake news monkey. Cinema and film itself further the story. At the Hitchcock Film Fest, Dr. Rayleigh and Cole are watching Vertigo. Cole has already told her that the woman of his dreams is blonde, and so Dr. Rayleigh transforms into Judy, her namesake in Vertigo. This is a deep homage to the classic film. If we look at each article in this front page, fear pervades every story. Terrorists create chaos. Wild lion prowling preschool. Should stun guns be given to citizens? The negative influence on public opinion is shown clearly. We zoom in and this same newspaper directly spurs Dr. Rayleigh to action, recognising the Gones lab technician and the virus connection. This starts the cascade of events that sends Cole to his fate. This influence of media upon the individual should be considered carefully. Gilliam's message is clear. We are subject to influence. We often view our environment exactly as it is shown to us, even if this representation is false. It can lead us to make choices which may not be in our best interests. We should heed his warning. I am still untangling The Twelve Monkeys. It is a great film and unfolds greater depths every time you watch it. If you want me to cover any other aspects, let me know in the comments below. Please hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you enjoyed this content and want more. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.